In front of us, we have a OnePlus smartphone. Not the OnePlus 9 though, or the OnePlus Nord 2. This guy is called the OnePlus Nord N200. And it's ridiculously inexpensive, which is probably why OnePlus doesn't really mention it. Speaking of inexpensive, if you've ordered one of my jerry rig knives in the last few months, they are still coming. The shipment is just delayed until probably September. The world is still waking up from COVID. Link is down in the description. Where was I? Oh yeah, the Nord N200 is a full-fledged OnePlus phone that only costs $230, which is incredibly cheap for a brand new OnePlus. So today, we're going to find out what this thing is really made of. Inside the box, we get a standard USB-C charging cable and an 18-watt fast charger. The phone itself is a pretty low-key satin blue color. Sometimes mid-range and budget phones have a little more drip, if you catch my drift, but that doesn't seem to be the case here. OnePlus is playing it safe. So how does OnePlus make an entire phone for 230 bucks? I'm going to assume there's a lot of plastic involved, but there's only one way to find out for sure. Let's get started. Right off the bat, I think I found one of the reasons why this phone is so cheap. These rear cameras are minuscule. I'll talk more about the specs in a second, but a good rule of thumb is that the bigger the sensor, the nicer the camera. And while this Nord N200 has really big lenses on the outside, the camera in the center is just a pinprick of glass. They are much smaller than the cameras we find on full-fledged flagships. We'll have to dig more into that during the teardown. Let's start with the scratch test. At $230, I would not be surprised at all if this guy had a plastic screen. What is surprising though is that this N200 isn't even the cheapest phone that OnePlus sells. They also have an N100 that costs about 150 bucks, but it caps out at 4G. This N200 is 5G internally, and externally we're seeing scratches at a level 6 with deeper grooves at a level 7. So the screen is indeed made of glass. Nice work so far. A soft plastic display would get scratched up pretty quick. The front-facing 16 megapixel camera is protected under the front glass. The earpiece grill is made from plastic and won't be falling out on its own. And then of course, about what we expected, the frame of the N200 is made from painted plastic, soft enough that my razor blade can shave out large chunks. There is a side-mounted capacitive fingerprint scanner, which can also be scratched. Then up at the top, we have more painted plastic. Over here on the left side, we have more plastic, including the volume buttons. Everything is plastic. We're also missing the mute slider, which is pretty much a staple on every other OnePlus phone. Kind of sad to see it didn't make it onto the N200. The SIM card tray is pretty much the longest and largest we've ever seen. The N200 does have expandable storage, but no rubber ring around the SIM opening, which means there probably isn't any water protection on this guy either. The bottom of the phone has its USB-C port, along with a loudspeaker, and a headphone jack. Nice. The back of the phone feels as smooth as glass at first, but in reality it's also made from plastic. Plastic isn't bad of course, well on cell phones at least. Single-use plastics from restaurants, grocery stores, and gas stations are pretty much destroying the planet. I mean, it's kind of strange to think that every toothbrush you've ever used is still sitting in a landfill somewhere. But that's a video for a different day. Plastics on cell phones doesn't mean it's inherently weaker. We've had just as many metal phones snap in half as plastic phones have. Here on my channel, it could go either way. Just a roll of the dice. And we're here to see which way it falls. Moving up to the camera lens durability, we have the main 13 megapixel camera up top, then a 2 megapixel macro camera, and a 2 megapixel depth camera. And if you're keeping track, that means the camera with the most megapixels is actually on the front. That's strange. The rear camera also only films in 1080p, and they're still all protected by the comically large camera lens circles that are pretending to be something they aren't like a V8 decal on your truck, or a spoiler on a Civic. The larger circles always look more expensive, and costumes are fun. You can't blame OnePlus for trying to spice things up at this price point. If you really want to use a costume to spice things up though, I recommend my teardown skin from Dbrand. 
It takes the dress-up game to a whole new level by showing off the internals of your phone safely from the outside. I'll leave a link down in the description. We carry the skin for pretty much every popular phone nowadays, and it does a good job of hiding scratches, or better, keeping scratches from even happening in the first place. Even though this is a $230 smartphone, OnePlus has managed to slip a high 90Hz refresh rate onto the 6.5-inch 1080p screen. And we can tell by the way the pixels go black and turn off that the display is IPS. After about 10 seconds, when the flame is removed, the pixels do return back to normal. Lastly, before the bend test, let's check the fingerprint scanner. It's over on the side and doubles as the power button, which I do prefer. Making the scanner the power button is just one less button push if the scanner happens to fail the scan, which does happen fairly often on underscreen fingerprint scanners. Adding some very deep scratches to the capacitive power button doesn't seem to deter the scanning capabilities too much. I'll give it a thumbs up. Now for the bin test. The regular OnePlus Nord, which is about twice as expensive as this Nord N200, failed my durability test last year. The phone itself survived, but the display underneath the glass cracked, rendering the phone unusable. With the first bend of the N200, we do get some flex, but no catastrophic damage just yet. When bending from the back, something does indeed snap. But whatever it is, is not visible from the outside, nor does it inhibit the overall function of the device. The Nord N200 is still intact and still alive. We'll have to see what popped during the teardown, the N200 survives my durability test. Interesting to see a $230 smartphone survive where $1,000 smartphones could not. Nice work, OnePlus. I can see why you'd want to keep this phone a secret. If too many people find out about it, they might prefer it over the flagships. Don't worry, your secret's safe with me. Besides the little cameras pretending to be big cameras, it's a pretty solid unit. I'm curious though, for those watching this video, when you go to buy a smartphone, how much are you willing to spend? Let me know down in the comments. I'll leave a link for my teardown skins in the video description, and come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks, Dumb, for watching. I'll see you around.